Was Junius a female apostle? Well, there are many that want to make the claim that, that Junius is a female and was an apostle. But if we look at the scriptures, we're going to find out that that is not the case. I know that there are those that want to put her or him, because and I say it that way, because we're not even sure if it's a male or a female. As a matter of fact, there's a good chance that it was not. Now, there's also a chance that it was a woman. So there's no way to really know for sure. We'll look at that in just a second. But there's this move to make women to have more prominence in the roles of certain offices that were not allowed for women, as far as we can tell, according to the scriptures, such as being a pastor, such as being an elder, such as being a deacon, and in this case, being an apostle. Now, before we get there, again, it would be difficult, as a matter of fact, contradictory for there to be such a role there for a woman, knowing what apostles were for, what they did, and the power they brought. Remember, these are the ones that brought scripture. They are the ones that we have literally their writings because they were breathed out by the Holy Spirit through them. We have them as they taught and led. And so it would kind of be contradictory to go against what Paul also said earlier in 1 Timothy 2.12. He says, but I do not allow a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. Now, this is not just in the church service because he says, for it is it was Adam who was first created and then Eve, and it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived. And so he's not even speaking of just that culture, but just in general. But the term is, or the point is to teach over a man or to have authority over a man. And so that was Paul's point. And so to come back in and state differently, that would seem quite a contradiction, not even seem it is a contradiction. So let's go to Romans 16, 7, and let's pull up the passage. He says in this, remember, this is at the very end. He's stating, greet Andronicus and Junia. Now, the question is, is this a husband and wife team? Are these just two different people? That part is hard to understand. And this term, Junia. The question is, is Junia a woman or a man? Because depend upon, is Paul writing and spelling or trying to say her name or his name or whoever this person's name is? Is he using the Greek name? Or the Roman name. And it's likely that he may have probably been trying to use the Roman name. Remember what Paul is trying to say, who he's writing to, his audience, and so forth. So it's likely that it's a Roman name. Now, can't take can't say for sure, but if it's a Roman name, well then it's more than likely a male's name. But here's the other point. When we look at this, and I want to show you something, I want to move the English over and I want to go to the to the uh, to the Greek. I want to look at two particular passages. I want to look at uh Sinaticus. And I want to look at, um, there's a variant that's also here in the Greek. Let me go over to the ink, to the Greek side. Uh, this is looking out of the NA28. And if we see now, if you look at the top, at the very top, there's a little dash, a little uh, mark right above the, the I, the E. Well, in that case, it would refer to the, the, the accent would be on the E, would make it an, a female's name. However, if we look over here at Sinaiticus, the accent is over the alpha. Uh, and so if the accent is at the end, this would make this a male's name. And so there's a difference. We don't know. But something that would also need to be fleshed out is uh, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. There's going to be a textual variant that's also here that, that shows up in a couple of different uh, manuscripts. We'll talk about this in just a little bit. But uh, this little accent at the top could indicate uh, it's a male or female, but the problem is there's some difference here. The accent here on the right side is above the iota. The accent on the left side is above the alpha. Above the alpha would make it a male's name. Above the iota would make it a female's name. But again, it's not really known. Now, this whole argument about where the accent is over the iota or the alpha, which part of the word is the accent on, is difficult because this accenting was not there initially. This accenting took place about seven centuries, eight centuries later. So in the initial writings, they weren't there. So that would make it even difficult. But let's go ahead and leave this whole argument as to whether it's a male or female's name. And let's look at the, the main point as to whether this person was actually an apostle or not. It says, greet Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ, Jesus before me. Now, the question is, is he stating that they are 
among the apostles, meaning they are part of the apostles or just known to the apostles. They are separate from or are they a part of? Now, there are other passages that we can look at to kind of get some indication, but even still, those are not as clear. Uh, but the evidence seemed to point to that they're not saying that they were part of the apostles, but outside of the apostles. One of the key ways to determine if this is mentioning someone who is a part of the group or outside of the group, it really depends on if we know of the parties. In other words, if we're addressing someone and the and the and the construct of this is similar, if the parties are unknown, well then that would seem to in, indicate that that this is inclusive. But if the parties are known, then it would seem to make them separate. In this case, the parties are known. We know who the apostles are, and we are we know the names Andronicus and Junia. And so that would seem also to indicate that this is that they are separate from the apostles. Let me give you an example. Uh, to make a distinction, if we go to uh, 1 Peter 2.12, and you'll see kind of the same construct here. If you go to, uh, let's, let's read it. Keep yourselves or keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. Well, this among this antois, Ethnason, this is antois, the exact same words that's used with it. Now, is that is that 100%? No. Um, but clearly here, this is used as a distinction. So among the Gentiles. Now, this is Peter making a distinction between them and the Gentiles. They, as the believers, and in this case, particularly likely the Jewish believers compared to the Gentile unbelievers. Now, one of the surest ways to make sure that we can know that someone is a part of a group is if we use the word home or if we use the word ek. Let's look at an example using the word ek, which is 2 Timothy 3, 6. He says, from among them are those who enter into households and, and uh, captivate weak women. But look at the notice of the word here, ek, to tone. So ek, out of or from. So this is part of the whole group. We don't have that there. It would be clear. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it's a good way to make sure that you definitely know that this is a part of the group. We see ek, out of or from, meaning that it's a part of in some way, shape, form or fashion. Well, we don't have that here in Romans 16, 7. Now, none of what I'm saying is, is completely conclusive to say that if this is absent, then this other thing must be true. Uh, if the word ek is not used, then this must mean that they're, that they're not part of it. Because there are examples where the, where the antois is also used, but you are part of. That happens uh, on occasion as well, but most often uh, it's used to separate the two. Now, going back to this passage, I don't want to get too nerdy. I don't want to get too caught up in the weeds, but let's go back to it. Notice something here. It says, who are of note among the apostles. Now, the word that's used for of note is this word that's highlighted on your screen. It's this word, epistemoi, which is of note, well-known, famous. Now, the question is, are these two people famous as apostles, well-known as apostles, or are they well-known to the apostles? Well, because we have this word, they're well-known, and toys, apostles, that has to, that, that seemingly has to convey that they were just well-known to the apostles, among the apostles, and that's why you would write this way. Remember, this is a greeting. This is not for something to be um, taken as some sort of hard-held doctrine, something to teach, that it must be absolutely known, uh, or else you wouldn't find this at the end of Romans as kind of a final greeting. That should be uh, understood as well. But then also, I mentioned before that there is a, there's a variant. Uh, if you notice at the bottom, there's this, in P46, the word tos or the is missing. If this word belongs to uh, and grant we're not sure, but P46 has it contained there. If that's the case, then this is clearly demonstrating that they are not apostles themselves. By the way, if they actually were apostles, if the, if Andronicus and Junia, male or female, are well known to the apostles or well known as apostles, if they're well known as apostles, the problem comes up. Why don't we know them? Why don't we see people talk about them? They're not spoken of in scriptures. They're not, they're not well spoken of. Uh, and I couldn't find any, but maybe they are. But they're, not, they're certainly not well spoken of amongst the early church. So why is Junia and Andronicus not well known um, in scripture or in any early patristic writings if they're well known? Well, it's not that they're well known of the apostles because, again, 
who are the well-known apostles? We already know Paul, obviously, Peter, uh, John. We know who the well-known apostles are. There are other apostles who we know are apostles who we don't know very much about. Bartholomew, that is. We don't know very much about them. And so you would use this if they're among the apostles that are well-known, Peter, Paul, John. Those would be those who we would say that would fit this category. If they are well known to the apostles, well, then that's the reason why uh, they seem to be obscure. But to be obscure but not well known, that's a contradict. That's a contradiction. And so it just seems, it just seems implausible to make this to be a woman and then also to be an apostle. And for that reason, guys, there's just no reason, no basis to make them to be an apostle. Why would Paul have to tell someone to treat them as apostles? Where in scriptures are the apostles having to fight for their right to be called or treated as apostle? Paul himself does so to some degree, but that's because there's some Jews who didn't think that he should be apostle, but he's demonstrating and he shows so with power, uh, his teaching, his following, who are his, who are the evidence of his apostleship, the Gentiles. Oh, by the way, other apostles validate his apostleship, such as Peter. And we see this attested to in Acts. We don't see this being attested to anywhere else. We don't see his calling. They're calling Andronicus or Junia. We don't see that. So neither of these two are apostles. Uh, there's no basis for it. You see this because there's just this desire for people to put women in positions that they should not be in in the scriptures uh, or taking positions that the Bible forecloses on women. And so, guys, don't let people convince you that Junia is a female apostle. Junia, if it's a woman, she was not a female apostle. Junia, if it was a male, still not a female apostle. Now, what I'll also do is uh, Dr. Dan Wallace has also given some, some work to this, uh, and I'll put a link to an article that he writes in regards to this, and he comes to the same conclusion. As a matter of fact, the overwhelming majority of scholars, the overwhelming majority of theologians, especially those uh, who are Greek grammarians, come to the same conclusion. Junia, one, is not an apostle. Two, probably not even a male, but irrespective of that, still refer back to number one, which is that that person is not an apostle. So I'll give a link to that as well. You can you can go and read that. It's a it's kind of a hard read. You have to know a little bit of Greek or at least try to follow him a little bit, but you'll see his final conclusion. And there's other folks that have given work to it. So I'll leave that link uh, as well. But guys, remember, if it's not clearly stated in scripture, it's nothing that we should follow. And this is clearly not stated. It's too debatable for un for anyone to make a defense that women can be apostles. Certainly that Junia was an apostle. Junia was not an apostle.